All right, so you've got um, <clears throat> ECG rhythm recognition exam at the end of the semester. You'll have to be able to identify uh, 10 of the core uh, ACLS rhythms. Um, so just off the top of my head, you know, you're looking at a normal sinus rhythm, sinus tachycardia, sinus bradycardia, ventricular tachycardia, ventricular fibrillation. Understand that ventricular tachycardia, you can have ventricular tachycardia with a pulse or without a pulse. Um, atrial flutter, atrial fibrillation, uh, supraventricular tachycardia or SVT, um, asystole, uh, and then you've got the, the blocks that we'll look at as well. So you've got first degree atrial ventricular delay, you've got second degree atrial ventricular block type one, also referred to as a Mobitz one or a Winkybach, and then you've got uh, second, second degree atrial ventricular type two, which is uh, also referred to as a Mobitz two, or you can have a uh, third degree or complete heart block. Uh, and we'll talk about those as we move through those here momentarily. Uh, you know, we've got different simulators uh, that you can work with in the classroom. It's gonna be important for you to make sure that you can analyze each rhythm as opposed to trying to just memorize what the rhythms tend to look like or what have you. And that's what we're gonna talk about a little bit today. So we're gonna review <coughs> ECG rhythms. <coughs> Excuse me, we'll talk about the, uh, uh, paper speed, we'll talk about the ECG paper. We'll talk about the construct of the 12 lead ECG. I've done several 12 lead EKGs in my um, in my career. However, I can tell you that in my career as a respiratory therapist, I've never been asked other than when I was in school uh, to interpret a 12 lead ECG. So we won't dive terribly deep into the interpretation of the 12 lead ECG where you get into your left axis deviation, right axis deviation, so forth. Not to say that that's not important. You should definitely read about that. We're utilizing uh, ECGs made easy, the textbook. It goes into 12 lead interpretation. You've got reading assignments. There'll be some test questions on there, but as far as the actual uh, competencies where you'll come in, we won't have you uh, go through the actual 12 lead per se, but you do need to understand that placement is important for the 12 and we'll talk about that here here shortly. Um, so without further ado, uh, some of the stuff I need to teach about, I think is gonna be helpful if I utilize, I've got uh, some multiple choice rhythms that we'll put up here. So we'll go through these and we'll uh, kind of talk and, and teach a little bit as we, as we roll through them. So you'll notice that uh, with each one of these rhythms that I put up on the board, you get to look at the rate uh, you and this is your atrial rate, your ventricular rate, your look at the regularity, look at your P waves, your QRS complexes, your QT intervals, your dysrhythmia, or what have you. Uh, you want to make sure that we're the QRS complex is looking important more or less at the duration. So you're looking at how wide that QRS complex is, and uh, you want to make sure that that's uh, not any wider than three small boxes uh, or 0.12 seconds. Uh, your PR interval should be less than 0 0.2 seconds, which is the width one. So while we're talking about time and stuff, let's go ahead and uh, do a little bit of a drawing on here. So a few things that we want to go ahead and talk about before we get into actual rhythm uh, uh, interpretation or anything to that to that effect. So if you look along along this line, you can see this tick mark here. Then you come over here, you see this tick mark, and then you come over here and you see this tick mark. For this particular sheet of paper, those are your three second ticks. Um, so basically, if I know that this is three seconds, because the ECG paper here is going to be running at 25 millimeters per second, that's our paper speed. Our paper speed, that way we can go through and do our uh, rate calculations based upon uh, the timing and so forth, uh, based upon a paper speed of 25 millimeters per second. So at 25 millimeters per second, we know that 15 of these large boxes, and what I mean by large box, if I'll take and outline this box here, this is our large box. Notice that the large box is created by a smaller grid or a grid of smaller boxes, one, two, three, four, five small boxes vertically by one, two, three, four, five boxes, small boxes horizontally. So a grid of five by five small boxes make up one of our large boxes. So there are uh, 15 of these large boxes 
in a three second period. And we know this because each large box, I'm just gonna put an equals mark here. Each large box equals 0 0.2 seconds. Each of these small boxes represent 0 0.04 seconds of time. Now, keep in mind, time is measured along the horizontal axis. So time will be measured moving forward along the horizontal axis. Along the vertical axis, your amplitude or your voltage is measured along your vertical axis. So time is on the horizontal axis, voltage is on the vertical axis. Uh, so with each of these small boxes representing 0 0.04 seconds of time, well, if you happen to have five of those small boxes that make up one large box, so 0 0.04 per, per small box, and you have five of those small boxes, you do your multiplication, that comes out to 0 0.2 seconds is the equivalent to one large box. So with that being the equivalent to one large box, then I know that five of those boxes together, so if I go up here and I count them, one, two, three, four, five, so that group of boxes right here represents one second of time because five times 0 0.2 is going to be one second. So then if five of those large boxes one second, then 10 of these boxes, so count out five more, one, two, three, four, five. Ten of these large boxes is two seconds. And then we get five more, which gets us to our three second tick. And that lets us know we're three seconds. So if we're looking at calculating an HR rate or a ventricular rate, note that the P wave equals atria. Your R waves equal ventricles. So if you're going to count an atrial rate, you'll count your P waves. If you're going to count a ventricular rate, you're going to count your R waves. And in a perfect world, your atrial rate should equal ventricular rate ventricular rate because for every QRS complex, so when you're looking at your ECG, at your P wave, Q wave, R wave, S wave, T wave, for every QRS, for every P wave that should be followed by a QRS complex. So you may hear your P's are married uh, to your uh, QRS complex or what have you. For every QRS complex, there should be a P wave in front of it. For every P wave, there should be a QRS complex after it. And then the distance between your P wave uh, and your R wave or your PR interval should be less than 0 0.2 seconds. So I'm going to clear that. So that basically gets us to how we've uh, calculated the ECG paper. I've calculated the ECG paper. So I'm going to clear this. And then we'll talk about a few other things. So now what we want to do when we're looking at, uh, we've got to determine what our rate is. So there's a few different things. You can utilize the six second method. You can utilize the rule of 300. You can utilize the rule of 1500. This is also called the large box method. This is also called the small box method. There's also a sequence method. Uh, it's important to note that when you're looking at your P waves and your QRS complexes, that the entire wave must fall within your six second period of time. 
if you're utilizing the six second method. So for instance, if this wave were slid over a little bit further this direction, and it was actually bisected by this vertical line, then I could not utilize that QRS complex in the calculation in the six second method for my ventricular rate. Same thing if a P wave were bisected by this vertical line, uh, I could not use it. So it, you need to have whole waves that fall within your six second strip of time. So if I were gonna go up here and assess my ventricular rate, I'm gonna count the R waves. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So I have 10 R waves within a six second uh, strip of time. Because that is six seconds, you take the total number with a six second method, take the total number, and then multiply by 10. So I've got 10 R waves, 10 times 10. This gives me an approximate ventricular rate of 100 per minute, 100 beats per minute. So my ventricular rate, 100 per minute. So now if we were to look at our rule of 300, then what I wanna do is try to find two R waves that fall pretty much on the same solid line. Uh, <clears throat> that fall within the same solid line. So you go here, those are absolutely on it, or you could utilize these two here as well. So if I were to utilize the rule of three, then I, there's three full large boxes between those two R waves. Uh, so then I take 300, divide that by 30, that gives me an approximate rate of 100. We've established that that is 100 with our six second strip. If I were to utilize the same two, two lines, then uh, you can look at this and uh, say there's three large boxes. What is actually, for the, for the purposes of demonstration, let's assume that this was on that heavy line. There's not another small box there. So instead there's 15. So if I were to utilize the small box method of the rule of 1500, then I would take 1500 divided by 15. And that again gives me my rate of 100. So all three calculations are coming up close to another. But uh, the six second method is the easiest of all methods, but it's likely the least accurate. But at case in point, you know, with a six second method, we come up with the rate of 100. But if I were to actually utilize these two items that definitely fall on, on the uh, hard line or solid line, by utilizing the rule of 300, then I'm going to take 300. There's four large boxes between those two. So four going 30, uh, let's see, seven, seven times. So that becomes 28, then 75. So that gives us a rate of 75. Uh, and then if we were to utilize the rule of 1500, we're going to have another rate of say, it's going to come out to 75 again. But notice, that utilizing these uh, calculations, you know, with a six second maybe we come up 100, because our R waves are different enough here, we get a rate of 75 here. So uh, if you want to get more specific, your large box or your small box methods are going to be, be a bit more accurate, but you also want to make sure that you're finding your R to R interval that is a bit more um, consistent. So notice that we're looking at the overall regularity, and I'm going to clear clear those drawings right quickly. Uh, so when you're looking at regular regularity, I know it's going to kind of sound a little crazy, but you can have a regularly regular rhythm, a regularly irregular rhythm, or an irregularly irregular rhythm. Uh, so because of that. Um, And I'm not going to have time to finish this today. Not right now, anyway. So let's just stop that recording.